John, do you remember where you are? <laughs> King's College Hospital, London. Thank God, thank God. A major trauma centre. Hit the curb, jackknifed onto the verge. Have we got a good pulse? Have we got an output? In no? One of the busiest a &E ones in the world. He will probably scream, but he won't remember. No, stop! Ah! A place oh, where love. Come on, sir. Let's go. Up you go. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. I There you go. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> and loss. It's, it's all right. Unfold every single day. Ah! Don't cry. Yeah. And we'll make, and we'll make oh. some mummy stays okay. with you. Will you send? Who's not busy? Squeeze that. We can't give up on her. Come on. We've got to be strong for mum. If it is the last bit, hey. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department. Oh! Well done. In just one 24-hour period. I never cease to be amazed at the robustness of human beings. I love you. And the strength of their relationships. Love, it's a reflex. It's what you do. For many of the families, despite the devastation that they may be facing, they give unconditional love. I've got stroke. Well, in, fit, in half an hour's time, you'll be on your way home, won't you? You look a bit calm. Yeah, good to working in centre. There's no waiting in there. That's a little sore throat can be dealt in that in that area. Okay. You're welcome. Bye bye. We give all this information to the patient, so you need to be assertive. Yeah. You need to be firm. It happens in any career that you've gone from being the new kid on the block, you know, not knowing how things work, to the ones that people look to. I think yeah, that's two things. Yeah. Experience and common sense, isn't it? Do you, do you agree with that, small little thing? Yeah, I kind of do, actually. Yeah. Experience is, like, massively important. Yeah, experience is, is a good teacher. Senior nurse Scott has been at King's for 13 years. Today, he's in charge of all 10 beds in Resus. Hello, Shannon. Hello, nice I'm Scott. This is just your first shift in here, first day? Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed the scared look. <laughs> you just sort of have to look and take everything in, though, don't you? Yeah, don't, don't be afraid to get stuck in. There was another student at another time on a night shift. So I'm like, have you ever done CPR before? She's like, no. I said, right, you're going to do some CPR now. OK. She jumps on and she's pumping down on his chest and his blood shooting out these holes. And I'm like, we stop it after three minutes. And I turn around and I'm like, oh, was that all right? And I could see it kind of filling up. And then it occurred to me. And I just went, have you seen a dead body before? And she went, no. You forget that people have a first time. GCS now 15, facial injury C1, C7 tenderness. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Pay attention. <laughs> Mum of two, Pauline, had a fall at home 40 minutes ago. Point 56 has a mechanical fall at half 10 this morning. Landing on the table. Pauline does not remember the full events. 
Lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we've got five minutes for primary survey. The first three minutes are gone. I haven't heard anything. Let's go. I like King's College Hospital. Wow, okay. Hems, red phone, 20 minutes. Hems, red phone, 20 minutes. The air ambulance is bringing in a 62 year old man. He fell off a roof head first. Right, Mary Jane, just so you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to okay. get, I'm gonna get, gonna gonna get someone to take 7 CDU. Five's yeah. going to go around to major cubicle eight. Yeah. Three's going to go to minus cubicle two. And then that gives us a bit of space. When you've got a full resource where you're completely rammed, but something else is coming in and you need to fit that in, and you've got five minutes to do it, you've really got to fire off a lot of big decisions in a very short period of time. Can we urgently have a porter to resource to move some patients, please? Thank you. Excuse me, I'm going to go to the toilet. Where? Can I walk right now? No. no. There's three of you here that it's waiting. They're all going to fight for one bed. <laughs> OK, we'll have to split this trauma call off a little bit. How many orthopedic surgeons I've got? Two. Can I leave you with this one then? So what we definitely need is C-spine, CT-head. Happy? I'll leave you to it for now. We'll do the other one. Right, surgery. It's here, it's here. Orthopedics. It's here. Anesthetics. I'm for him. It's here. Yes. Do what I tell you, you'll be absolutely fine. Sorry. Put some gloves on and an apron. You're helping. That'll be Hems from the park. So, Clems, just to give you an update, a yeah. 60 year old male has severe head, chest, and abdominal injuries. He's cardiovascularly unstable and in intubated and ventilated. Yeah. This is this patient, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Where are you going now, are we? We are just going to take you next door. There's somebody quite sick coming in, so we have to make yeah. a space. Oh, it's okay, so yeah. If you want to get hands on do, if you just want to stand back and watch, I'm not forcing you to do anything you don't want to do. I want to get in there, but I don't want to get in people's way. You won't get in people's way because you'll be told to get out of the way. As soon as he rolls in through the door, it's attached to blood. So we could be looking at chest strains, we might even open his chest, or we could be looking at just, there's nothing we can do here. He might already be dead by the time he gets in. Can everybody else sign in that's here before we start, please? A 62-year-old man with life-threatening injuries has been thrown in from Sussex. He fell to the ground while working on a roof. It's a very time-critical situation. A fall from height, the two big things you're looking at is a head injury and a chest injury. Straight up in here, guys. We'd heard that he'd fallen into his head, so in the back of your mind, you're thinking it could go either way here. It's on Mark's count, he's got the tube at the top. Okay, we'll go Okay, we're all ears, thank you. Hi guys, this is David. He's approximately 60 years of age. David has had an unwitnessed fall 30 feet off a roof, landing on concrete. Injuries top to toe. He has a traumatic brain injury with a right parietal hematoma. He has chest injuries with suspicion of bilateral rib fractures and concerns of intra-abdominal bleeding. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, first of all, I want the blood connected in cardiothoracic surgeon, two chest strains in the thoracostomy. Primary survey, we've got five minutes. Come on then. Ventilation, Jenny. Blood is being connected, yeah? Hey, you. Thanks, mate. Okay. Okay, chest strain, please. And just some 10 silk, please. Since arriving, David has been given three pints of blood. Good. Primary survey plan. Blood being taken, blood is coming up, chest strains in, and we should be ready to go for scan very shortly. Barbara, do we have any details for him, name-wise? What? Yeah, come on, we've got David Beck. 
Okay. Okay. Are we almost ready to go to scan? From an airway point of view, yes, we got drugs. Okay, let's go. He went to work as normal. So he used to fit aerials and satellites up on the roofs. He gave me a kiss goodbye. And I always give him a kiss and say goodbye and, you know, have a good day and all that. And I didn't this particular day. I was always saying to him, it's about time you give up. But no, he wouldn't. He loved it. Got a phone call. Police car pulled up. And he sort of said, Mrs. Beck, I said, yeah. And he said, oh, we're taking you to London. And I, I honestly, truly thought he was already gone. This can't be sorted out in the next couple of days, so I'm going to be very handicapped. Yeah, there'd be two of us. I might have to put off my arm. Well, it just seems sad. I haven't got a space or a nurse. You just wait there for two minutes. I'm getting both. Oh, lovely. Tess, number six. Dave, number six. Six, six. Tess, can you just take this new one? Status. Okay. Lovely. Thank you, Tess. Well, his CT's going to be delayed, isn't it? Unless we find out when it's where he's... Because they're going to be chocker with these two now. The CT. 56-year-old Pauline's been given pain relief. She's now waiting for a CT scan to show the extent of damage to her spine and neck. Just arrived status. Yeah. Just needs to go into CDU. CDU. Medics. Medics. Gone Just a right gone to air you. Yeah. Thank you. I don't. What's your name? I don't know. Because they're giving me uh, morphine. Morphine. Yeah. yeah. Don't cry, baby. I'm such a numbskull. I'm Please don't cry. Are you, oh, you worry me, Papa. I know. Ah. You do worry me. It just happens so quick. It, the accidents do happen quick, though. Papa, all they did was go up the stairs and I missed my like footing and hit the table. Don't cry, please. Please. I'm fine. Don't cry. I did kind of it. So, I was just so frightened because I was a wild. Well, she's a bit accident prone. Tripped in a manhole cover and broke her foot. She ran across the road, slipped, tripped and fell onto the pavement and fractured her wrist and broke her elbow. And then this time fell up the stairs, um, hit her face off the table and smashed all her teeth out. It's, it's, um, Emotionally draining. Oh, 
Well, I keep trying to tell her that, you know, just slow down. You know, you're getting old now, or older, and just slow down and try and take things easy, you know, rather than dashing across the road and falling over and falling up the stairs and, you know, all the stuff that's happened to her. Yeah, it's been um, been a bit scary. I, I hold her hand more often now when we go out. Have you seen the bottom teeth? No, I don't particularly want to. Man. It's just my teeth. <coughs> There's not many of them left. Um. When is it ever going to end, Bob? Soon, I hope. Can you uh, get me some decent underclothes, please? They've cut all my underclothes. They cut all my shirt. It's 38D. Oh, yeah, please. 38D. 38D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll go and see. I'll be I think you make your marriage. Um, the, I don't believe in love at first sight. You know, I think you grow to love someone. Yeah, he has got uh, nasty contusions predominantly on the right side with a large temporal fracture on the right side, bilateral orbital fracture and also a temporal fracture on the left side. David's head took the full impact of the fall. The CT scan will reveal the level of injury to his brain. We've got two boys. Um, they're now 37 and 36. We always used to like going to Cornwall, Devon. We had our own caravan, so we went touring. Um, and the boys thought that was, you know, the bee's knees. So important is now to, to see if he's got other injuries or bleeding from somewhere. If not, and if it is an isolated head injury, then it's very, very important to maintain his blood pressure relatively high to make sure he's getting enough cerebral perfusion pressure up yep. there because this brain will, over the next days, swell up. So this is now our task. I, I don't think you could actually say after 42 years that I'm in love with him, but I love him. It's for best or for worse, really. You know, that was in your vows. It's, it's strange, isn't it? You know, I think it's like partnership in the end. Right, we're going to roll you again. There you go. Madam, you can sit in, in one of this chair. Okay. Opera critic John injured his ankle while on a skiing holiday. Right, you're John Bacan, is that right? That's right. And how, how young are you now this time? I am like 78. <laughs> right, good. Right, how can I help you today, mister? Well, I uh, found the second morning running that my left ankle yeah, is so sore like I can put any weight on it. Right, OK. Fall in love, don't forget we were in our 30s, you know. It wasn't romantic love, oh, here's the love of my life. It was just a very interesting man and very charming, very easy. He asked me to go to an opera, the English version of Wagner Opera, and we've been going to music ever since. I've been married to John for 42 years. So we tried the massaging it a bit with oil and it not, did not make the difference it made yesterday morning. So you, you're being oil massaged? Yeah. And pain relief? Yeah. It didn't take any pain. Sorry, no pain. I didn't take any pain. Oh, right, okay, just, only, just the massage. Yes. She wear the trousers, do you think? Uh, yes, I think probably uh, she wears one and a half of the legs of a pair of trousers, yes, I'd say so. Do you have any medical problems, sir? Uh, yeah. uh, yes, I'm uh, suffering from prostate cancer. That's been treated. 
it's got out a little bit of it onto the pubic bone. Yeah. So he's on female hormones. Okay. Casadex. Daily. Many men die with cancer rather than of cancer. Uh, and uh, that seemed to me a fairly encouraging thing to keep in mind. And I never had any pain, so um, I've been lucky, perhaps. I just stay on the chair. Yeah. And it's someone... medicines, if you need to know them. Oh, we've got a simvastatin as well. We've got blood pressure. We've got cholesterol as well. The way I look at it. Yeah. Uh, cholesterol is under control. Good. Plus your diet, I think. You need to get your diet well, the done. the diet, we eat extremely well. Mm. You need and to you limit your oil. level of oil, <laughs> basically. Oil. The only thing he takes too much is Yeah, fish is less oil. That's all. My husband would say that I rule the roost. In everyday matters, there's absolutely no doubt. You know, he's not interested enough, really. Right, sit you back to the waiting area. OK. But with um, my husband, it's not a matter of let you do, really, is it? You know, you kind of uh, accommodate one another, don't you? Well, I'm going to get something to eat. I know you can't have anything, so I'll eat it out there. Too right, you will. <laughs> OK, I won't be long. Don't kiss me. Let us kiss you, don't be silly. I mean on the lips. Yeah, you're having a laugh, isn't it? Wait a minute. <laughs> Do you have any relatives at all yet? Right. Apparently there's a wife who is being blue-lighted in by the police. Okay. Okay. She's expected, yeah. So should we send her to surgical critical care if I think gone? that would be very yeah. good that yeah. we would talk to her there. Yeah? Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. That'd no change. Did you get that as well? David's CT scan has revealed significant injury to his brain. He's obviously sort of gone like that, hasn't he? And yeah, must be, yeah, sort of, yeah, sort of, yeah, sort of as he's landed, uh, sort and of gone and slipped a bit further like that, on the... Yeah, yeah. But I'm surprised his chest... The chest is, yeah. It's not even a rib... Well, not, not an obvious rib crack, I can see. Yeah. Yeah, so we're working across, that's an hour, really, from getting here into scan and back out again. It's... I've seen some people fall from great heights and bounce. I've seen people that have fallen from standing and, and had a big bleed. But usually, the, the higher up they fall, the, the more chance you've got of them having some brain damage. Once you've stabilised the patient, there's not that much more to do for them. He was um, on a life support. Um, he was in a coma. We all moan about our partners, but you just don't realise until something like this happens. I can't believe how quiet it is. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how quiet it is. Yeah. It's always a bit cold. <laughs> oh dear. I can't get me sure I've got shoes here, I can't get on. All swollen. I put my coat on the floor. Getting chilly you now. Hello. How can I hide your Daniela? I am going to Jamaica tomorrow. Oh. Say hello and goodbye. <laughs> for how many? Like a month? Just for a while. With your girl boyfriend? I hope so. Enjoy your holiday. All right. Enjoy. Oh, I love it, that Daniela. <laughs> It's one of the if way to dog. This is quite sweet. Oh, yeah. You got a boyfriend? No. Really? Yeah, good girl. <laughs> Continue with your studies and the rest will follow. Sounds oh. good. Y yes. Hello. Oh, yeah. How can I help? Well, I'll be next, no. You know? You're next, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. A very, very fit man. Just finished with the army in 1952, um, 19, April 52. And it was. I went down to get a job, you know, at the Labour Exchange, 
And they turned around and said, we ain't got no, got no job for you. I thought, that's just tasty. I said, you know, I said, I've been out there for two years, right, doing your uh, bit and pieces, whatever it was you had to do. I said, when I come back, there's no, no work for me. I said, tell you what, don't bother. I said, I'll go and get my own work. And I took to wind the cleaning like a duck to water. I was really fast. You don't, you don't stand going like this, clean the wind. Come, finish, next job. And that was it, you Lick, darling. Don't lick what? Don't lick your lips. They'll get drier and drier if you do that. No, that's what? Jake. Maybe you should have a lipsel in your pocket, but you'll just lose it, won't you? Yeah. Stick some on now, though. There. Put some on. Yeah. See? That's better, isn't it? Yeah? Mm-hmm. She's probably cared for me better than I've cared for her. She looked, she looked after me pretty well. Um, I'm sure it's partly due to her that I'm still around today. Darling? Yes? Your feet are not your best part, darling. No, I know. <laughs> How much of me is my best part? Darling. Well, your smile is lovely if you only had your teeth, you know. Uh, He sort of doesn't really focus on his cancer. There is a danger, and that's, you know, always there. If you're awake at night, it will worry you, or if you're having a reflective moment, it will worry you. But in our kind of normal, busy lives, no, we don't let it. And John is a sort of... Uh, uh, optimistic man. That's uh, he would. So it's more around your ankle. It's it's yes, round here. Be Classical like. textbook sprain. Yes. Okay. So, so 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 it sounds very very much on mm. what you, what happened mm. to you. We have good times and, and the not so good times, and you uh, um, you work through them together. Kings ain't ain't. Full now. Go ahead. Red here, yeah? Yeah. And black underneath, isn't it? That's it. It's ten. Lovely. Bye. And another one. Okay, go on. You've done very well being stripped down for such a long time. It's this that's giving me. Oh, right, yes, it's it's very dry. There's a bit of, of crusted yeah. blood around there. Yeah, we'll, the yeah, results the from Pauline CT scan are back. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's did got, you say it was the... one crack in the bone. Right. It's a bit further up, a bit right. higher up than the coccyx bone. Right. We call it the lumbar region. All oh, right, lumbar yeah. spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And there's no specific treatment for that apart from taking painkillers, really. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Should we have another look at the back? Exactly. Then? Would that be right? Let me... They found another fracture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have got a bit of a bad track record. I've just got to take things a bit easier. It's not fair on John, you know, because he tends to worry about everything I, I do. I'm just a bit stiff. All right. I class myself as being very lucky. 
And I often think I put him through too much. And I don't think it's fair. He's an angel. I wouldn't be without him. Mr. Runcorn? Yes, it's me. All right, would you mind coming through this way? Yeah. Anyway, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, come through this way. You don't seem to have any shoes. I know, I couldn't get them on. My, all my feet are swollen. Okay. You all right, do you need any help? Yes, there's my legs. Let's get those legs up onto the bed. Oh. Oi, well done. Oh. Right, well, very nice to meet you. Thank my you. name's Josh, I'm one of the yes. doctors here. Oh. So tell me what brings you into the emergency department um, today. I've got um, a swollen ankle to start. Mm-hmm. OK. And um, my private parts, you know, I think I'm, maybe you've got a blockage here somewhere. OK. Also, I've got... Um, we go, I can't go to the toilet. What's it called? Constipation. That's it, yeah. OK, so three, three things today. Yeah, yeah. You've got family. Uh, yes, I've got uh, two sons. Uh, are they still... And my wife died Boxing Day. Boxing Day just gone? Just gone, yeah. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. I met her in um, 1950. Father was a right stricker, I tell you, you know. But one, one day, she was indoors crying her eyes out. I said, what's happened to you? She said, my dad hit me last night. Well, I said, it'd be the last time he'll ever touch you. Because I went man after him. I said, if you ever lay a hand on her again, I said, it's, it's going to be your lot, my friend. Right? Believe me, I was really annoyed. I said, I'm going to marry her shortly. Right? And that was it. He packed it up after that. Never touched her after that. Okay, the 58, 58 glorious years. Yeah. No problems. Fantastic. You don't see that so much these days. No. Well, I got married on the. Uh, 3rd of August, 1952. I was waiting at the bottom inside the church for her, you know, and her father brought her in. Then he brought her down the aisle, you know. I never see him move so quick. I thought he might be for him up changing mind. <laughs> Had she been at home with you or Oh, no, in she's in a, she was in a, a private, uh, a nursing home, just mm. round the corner from mm. me, you know. Okay. Beautiful place. Oh, what's, what a terrible Christmas for yeah, you. Yeah, but it, it's a release for us. She had dementia, um, Parkinson's. Oh. All right, we're just going to pop this line in. Peggy was ill. She was about 70. In the beginning, I used to, um, when she really got better, I, I used to dress her. Everything, you know. Uh, I'd give, her, give her a stick wash. And she had, it got to that stage where she, you know, I, you know, hardly recognise you, you know. So I said, right, enough's enough. I said, you ain't, don't, give, don't give her no more oxygen. I said, she's been full enough. I said, just let it take its course. And me and me and Robert was there. We both held her hand, you know. And uh, that was it. She went away peacefully and had no pain. Who does all your cooking for you? I do it. You do it yourself? Yeah. How's your chefing skills? <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> right, we'll just get that, uh, that x-ray done next. Okay. They'll come and get you, though, so you just relax here for a bit. OK. You're warm enough like that? I'm fine. Good. Mm, thank you. And that's your water? Yeah.
<laughs> yes. Do you just want to go over there and look after him? Old man. I'm not away, leave him in the room. I will go talk to him. I'm not sure I can do this if you want. You might feel the same. He was with Grandad most of the time, like, because he lived up literally the top of the road from us. I used to come home and I used to dance with my granddad around the sitting room to all Frank Sinatra and Perry Como and all things like that. He had a stroke, he became ill. I started to take up care for him. I gave up dancing, college, social life. That's what I'm up to. I don't think you'd have the patience. Um, it's not something that's easy, trust me. Um, you see so many people go, it starts fucking with your head. <laughs> Doing care work, it's not really the life of a teenager, is it? But um, that was my life. Just had to kind of deal with it and I enjoyed it, so I didn't really... Didn't feel like you missed out? Nah. I feel like I'm missing out now my granddad's gone. Because I don't really have that routine no more. Of I've got to do this and I've got to do that, and... It's like... I ain't got that smile no more to look at when I come home. And I miss it. He just, he deserved everything we did for him and I just thought it was my place to, to take up because of everything he'd done for me. He was very unlucky to have you. I was lucky to have him. Um, is this the trauma one? The fall down the stairs. It's up in five, but I'm not sure if the bay's ready yet. Okay. Oh, we've had a bit of any clubs. Are you alright? Uh, can't hear correct. We've been up for four weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is... A lot of the systems are amazing. Their knowledge is just... It's not a patch on but anything. I like just think, sometimes, am I ever going to get to that level? Like, obviously you will. Traumas are reasonably simple to look after. If you're trained right, it's exciting, it's gory, it's the stories you take home. But if you want to be a proper a &E nurse, you know, show me how to look after a really good chest pain. Sort out an asthmatic. Being able to manage a good miners area. Sit out and triage for 12 hours and triage 140 people and get it right all the time. Good A&E &E nurse is, is an all-rounder. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you come back for a second one. Alfred's x-ray shows no significant problems. 
He'll stay in overnight for observation. Alfred, have you got any family that live, live near you? Uh, no, only my son. So you you don't need any help at home with anything? Oh, no, I'm fine. You, I all, everything from, you're absolutely fine me. at home. Yeah. And then if you need any help, you can just ring your sons, can you? Okay. And they'll, oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. OK. Can cook, sew, iron, all the women, all the jobs that a woman can do. Yeah. The times I've heard something, oh, I wish I had you, I wish I had you for a husband. Oh, I wish I had you. But you can't have me, I've sp spoken for. <laughs> A wonderful life, yeah. I know the cows are very, very good, right? But I like to have it my way. You understand what I mean? It's got to be my way, right? If we just wait on the chair there, I'll see if a porter can come. OK. And then we'll yeah. take... Yeah. You're walking quicker than me, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so leave them there. Yep. And I've got a couple right. of paracetamol for you up here. There you go. Oh, is that them? Just paracetamol. OK, fine. All right? Say nothing, darling. <laughs> my granddad passed just like literally before my 18th. It was like, is it my turn now to to be the adult? Is this is this where it's time to choose my path? because I'm 18, Grandad's always told me, don't do this, don't do that, go and do this, go and do that, and he'd always advise me, and it was like, well, now I've got that option, what do I do? I learned quite a lot from my Grandad. I think I've got a very old soul. Them on your lap, is that all right? <laughs> all right. Yeah. So much stuff, isn't you? <laughs> Mobile chemists. I know he's up above watching over. So I'm blessed. Are we going to wait in reception? Well, we're going to wait just out there. What, Nicole? What? Oh, it's cold. So just like the party, I'll be the last one here. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Everything that happens to me daily is new to me and you work with it or work around it or whatever. I just want things to be normal, but it won't happen. I know that and people have told me that. So only time is a healer, isn't it? Being with Pam, it helps me immensely. I couldn't do without her, I'm sure. 
He's infatuated with me now. I'd sort of say to him now, I like going to bed. You know, if you're tired, go to bed. I'd, no, I'll wait until you come to bed. He won't do anything on his own without me now. <sighs> Which is sometimes, I think it's nice if I could have a quiet five minutes. <laughs> Even an hour. <laughs> At Camberwall, I do private jobs as well, as you guys cleaning. I've been going there 30 years. They think the world of me, they don't want to get rid of me. I'm afraid to leave them, really. You're not going anywhere, you're not going nowhere. But I've had enough, you're not going anywhere. He's been stabbed twice in the left thigh. As a parent, all you want is for your children to be happy and healthy. We may not even be back tonight. You have one tumour and then you're told it's gone, and then it comes back. With your track record, we have to assume the worst and hope for the best.